All right, so I've had a few requests to talk about pharmacy law. So in this video, we're gonna talk about pharmacy law. Now the main points to remember are gonna be the law titles, the years they were enacted, and basically a brief summary about what they consist of. The first set that we're gonna talk about today is gonna be the Controlled Substance Act of 1970. This act made sure that anybody who dispenses, manufactures, wholesales, or distributes a controlled medication must have a DEA number. And if you want to learn more about the DEA number, I have a DEA calculation video in the other videos. Another law is the Pure Federal Food and Drug Act of 1906. It's also known as the Wiley Act. This act made sure that the manufacturers wouldn't make claims for cures that wouldn't work. So you can't say this is going to fix obesity if it's for your vision. Um, this act also protected against misbranding and adulteration and to the purity of products. The next law is going to be the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which is similar to the Pure Federal Food and Drug Act in the name. This act made it sure that manufacturers prove what was in their product and provide scientific evidence to its claims. Cosmetic and therapeutic drugs were now regulated. So because of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, this is when drugs had to start going through a process to make sure that they work. The next set of laws is going to be the Favre-Harris Amendment of 1962. There was a drug called thalidomide that was found to cause birth defects in babies. This drug was initially in the European area. Um, it was under investigation in America or in the United States, and so we never used it as a drug. But this law required signed patient consent forms for new investigational drugs. So you hear on the radio sometimes where, hey, you know, sign up for this drug. You'll get paid for your time, and, and it could help so-and-so. So because of this act, proof of drug effect was managed. Good manufacturing practices were required so you couldn't produce drugs out of your garage. It had to be in good, clean, safe areas. This one also manufactures to provide product updates and package inserts. And this also gave the FDA more power over clinical investigations. Now the Poison Prevention Packaging Act of 1970, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission is responsible for enforcing this act. This prevents poisoning in children. It required each prescription to have a child resistant cap. Patients may also request non child proof cap containers by signing a log or, or when requested from the physician. The next three are going to be your medical law device of 1976. This requires companies to have pre market approval of medical devices and ensure product was not making false claims and was not harmful to the public. The Federal Anti-Tampering Act of 1983, your parents might remember this. If you don't remember this, you might remember this as well. But the Tylenol capsules were actually contaminated, and so everybody was worried that Tylenol was no longer a safe medication due to this contamination. So because of this law, it's required that all over-the-counter products must have a tamper-resistant barrier that can easily recognize if breached. So if you go to a store and you get over-the-counter medications, you take the cap off, the first thing that you see is like an aluminum foil type cover. Now, if that is ever not there, you should not take the medication because it's possible that it could have been tampered with. So the next one's gonna be the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1990. This required Medicaid patients to be offered counseling, and this also required records must be kept about the patient and drug therapy. So if you ever go to the pharmacy, to pick up medications, you'll, tip, you'll typically hear somebody ask, okay, have you ever taken this medication before? And if you have, would you like counseling on it? It's because of the OBRA Act. Now, sometimes there's, there's silly tricks to remember something. And the way that I like to remember this is OBRA sounds like cobra, the very poisonous snake. If you get bit by a cobra, you have to call, or you should call the poison hotline and they'll give you counseling. So that's just one of the silly tricks that I like to use to remember the, what the OBRA Act is actually used for. Now the last one is gonna be the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994. Now the FDA has no jurisdiction over these products unless the product is misbranded or adulterated. Um, the product can only make three claims on its labels. Examples of these would include most herbal and mineral products. So if you go into the pharmacy or into drugstores and you see the over-the-counter that aren't necessarily fall into one of the, the classes of, of drugs, um, you'll see that they only have three claims on them. 
So maybe the claims are going to be helps with the disease or nutrition content and nutrition support. So that's it for these videos. Other things to review um, in the other videos that I've talked that I have recorded is going to be the drug recalls, the NDC, and the MSDS sheet. Make sure to click like if you enjoy this video and subscribe so you can get future updates on the pharmacy technician exam. Thank you very much.